Hey everyone, Luke here. I hope you're doing well. And today I'm going to talk about copper symptoms. Now these are very common in society, especially at this time. Um, I would say over half of people on uh, our programs when they first start have uh, some sort of copper imbalance, which can be biounavailable copper, it can be not enough copper, or it can be um, excess copper. Okay, so let's just talk about copper in general, um, where it's found in the body, what it does, and um, the symptoms that go along with having a copper imbalance, okay, which in most cases is going to be excess copper for the vast majority of people, okay? So first of all, skin problems. That's a big one. Now, copper... Copper is found in all connective tissue, okay? So your skin, your tendons, your ligaments. Um, so any sort of skin issue usually has a copper imbalance at its root, okay? Things like uh, eczema, dermatitis, um, a lot of uh, a lot of things like that, right? A lot of those uh, acne, um, acne especially, um, any sort of those sorts of situations, um, copper imbalance, okay? So copper and zinc are kind of antagonists and they work together in a lot of ways. And so most people have too much copper and not enough zinc. And so what happens is um, they get these skin issues because they don't have enough zinc in their bodies and they have excess copper, okay? So that's a very common one. Also, um, like we talked about with the connective tissue, uh, tendinitis, um, you know, connect loose, um, weak connective tissue like your ligaments and things like that. That could also be associated with um, copper imbalance. So that's a big one: is the skin problems, definitely. Um, another one is, uh, I would say it's too much head energy. Um, so it's kind of like a, an overly analytical. Um, you're kind of stuck in your head, um, spacey, foggy. Um, I'm just going to call that head energy. Okay, a lot of people have a lot of trouble getting out of their heads. This is very common in our society. I mean, it's bad enough that we already live in a pretty heady society, right, where we, we're always having to think of, you know, paying the bills, and i got to be on work on time, and all these different things going through our heads. We live in a pretty stressful society, right? you got to balance a lot of different stuff in order to be, uh, in order to succeed in our society, right? And copper uh, imbalance definitely contributes to that. Um, you know, brain fog, um, spaciness, um, a lot of that is called by copper excess. Um, you know, all sorts of, just what I think of it as is too much head chi, right? Copper tends to activate the old brain as opposed to zinc, which activates the newer cortex, you know, the frontal lobe more. And uh, so copper you know, it definitely makes you just, you're too much in your head, and it can be hard to get out of it. And sometimes, uh, you know, until you get out of your head, then you start eliminating copper, which is where the meditation exercise comes in, right? Because if you move energy out of your head into your body, it helps you eliminate copper. And some people, they can't eliminate copper because it's so integrated into their personality that until they get their head chi, until they get their chi out of their head, right, into their bodies, they're not going to be able to eliminate copper, okay? So that's a big one, is head energy, okay? Um... Also, I would say candida problems, fungus, okay, fungal issues. Uh, this kind of goes along with uh, dermatitis um, and eczema. A lot of those sometimes can be fungal issues, like fungus is actually on the skin. That's what's causing the skin condition. But I'm thinking of also like candida. So, uh, you know, you get bloating, um, candida symptoms, along with the, uh, you know, candida often causes skin problems, right? But a lot of times uh, with candida, you know, you get bloating after you eat a lot of carbohydrates. That's the most common one because uh, candida overgrowth tends to feed on um, starches in the body. So when people eat sugar or even carbs, you know, some people can't even eat any, any carbs for a while um, because anytime they eat it, they get bloating and stomach pain. It's because what happens is uh, the yeast is basically eating those starches, right? And then they uh, turn into alcohol. And, and uh, there's a lot of gas and stuff like that as they digest the starches, right? Uh, people also get brain fog sometimes. I've had this before. Um, I still actually get it a little bit if I uh, eat like a lot of carbohydrates at one sitting and maybe I'm tired on top of it. Like if I got maybe six hours of sleep and I ate a bunch of corn chips, I might still get a little brain foggy just because I still have a little bit of uh, yeast overgrowth in my body, I can tell. And that's because when you overload on those starches, 
um, what's happening is the yeast actually converts into alcohol. So that was give you brain fog. The brain fog is actually your body being poisoned with alcohol from the yeast. Okay, so that's a lot of causes is brain fog. Um, so that kind of goes along with the head energy, but we can put that in a different category. Also, is you know brain fog. Brain fog's a big one. Um, also, structural imbalances. Um, a lot of people with copper imbalance uh, have rounded shoulders, right? Um, you know, they have scoliosis in their spine. Uh, they have twists in their spine, rounded shoulders. There could be problems with the jaw. Um, myself included, because I was quite copper toxic and still am uh, somewhat copper toxic as I continue to eliminate it. Um, so that's a big one. Um, you know, it's the, stru it's the structural issues. Okay, not so much in the bones and things like that, but uh, it's more you know, uh, like well, it is in the bones, but it's more like a whole your whole body, like your your shoulders will be rounded. Um, you know, not so much like osteoporosis or things like that, but more like twists in the body, right? Actual misalignments. That's what copper tends to cause more. Okay. It may not seem like it, but there's actually a copper-like personality, okay? Now, it's important to remember the physiological effects of minerals, and I've talked about this before, so hopefully it's not too new of a concept to you, but um, the minerals, right, there's a certain energy to them, right? They give a certain characteristic to the body, mind, and soul. And the same is true of copper, okay? Copper gives copper-like characteristics to the person, to the body in which it is in, okay? And so copper is a intuitive mineral. If you think of copper, it's soft and metallic. It conducts electricity, okay? So it's a more feminine um, mineral, okay? And so it imparts this quality um, to people. Um, it's more, it's higher naturally in children, so there's a more childlike personality trait that goes along with the copper. Um, the person is often younger looking. Um, if you think of a lot of the the younger men today, they're more coppery men, uh, as opposed to um, the older generations that were more like uh, cadmium type men and things like that. You know, mechanics and construction workers, those are more associated with um, a different you know, those are more like grounded, um, heavy metals, a lot of them. Um, and then today's men are more coppery. And you're seeing that where they, um, a lot of them are more what you would call metrosexual, right? Um, a lot of them are more feminine, right? They're not as rough and tough. Um, and these are all more copper-like characteristics, okay? Um, the person is more childlike, intuitive. Um, and then in excess... Um, you know, they become spacey, right? It, it comes too far. Um, you know what I mean? And then, um, so another one that I would say is um, PMS problems in women. Now, this one's obviously for women. Okay? So problems with the menstrual cycle. Okay? Um, really excessive periods um, where they get like really bad um, hormonal disruption and uh, you know it really affects them strongly that's also um, directly correlated to copper imbalance okay so what many people don't realize is that um, copper and estrogen mimic each other and um, one day it will be found that hormones actually have certain minerals in them and um, the, the male and female hormones actually have to do with the male and female minerals that are in the hormones and then those minerals impart an energetic male or female energy to those hormones, okay? And so testosterone, for example, is, has more zinc in it. It has a more male-like quality, okay? So same with estrogen. And so many women don't realize this, but um, copper uh, is raised and lowered during that time of the month. So, for example, women, when they're on their cycle, right, they get uh, more emotional a lot of times. They get skin problems. Remember skin problems? copper imbalance, right? And uh, as estrogen goes up and down, um, copper follows it, or as you should say, estrogen follows copper. They're both closely linked, right? And so during that time of month, copper goes up, right? At the peak of the menstrual cycle, copper goes up, right? So women, they get more skin problems, right? A lot of women during the time of the month get more acne, okay? Um, and things like that. And that's actually directly related to copper, because the body 
is raising copper in the tissues at that time of the month. Okay, um, and that's also you know why the woman tends to get more hormonal and emotional. That's because estrogen levels rise along with the copper. Okay, so any sort of uh, excessive um, you know skin difficulties and things like that during PMS definitely definitely correlate to uh, copper imbalance okay so I think that's about it um, there are more I'm sure that I forgot um, many are more subtle you know and things like that and then um, at a later point I will make a video um, actually showing a hair test and I will show hidden copper indicators on a hair test and that'll be the next copper related video and so you can look forward to that. And then at some point, I will also make a copper handling uh, copper elimination, how to eliminate copper. Okay? Um, because that's important as well. Okay? And, you know, it's important that, you know, we know how to deal with copper elimination symptoms because sometimes they can be really bad on, hard on people. You know? And um, it definitely takes um, a more proactive approach so it doesn't become overwhelming eliminating your copper. Okay? Especially with regards to personality integration. Okay? So I hope that helps you guys out. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe down below, and I'll talk to you guys later.